welcome to my how to solder video. This um, is for beginners, but I'm also going to try to make it as quick and fact filled as possible. Here's my first soldering iron I ever owned. This is a, like a Radio Shack. It has a 15 or 30 watt switch. This is a butane soldering iron. Uh, these are very handy um, if you have to work on stuff away from electricity. This is my soldering station I finally bought. It's probably a hundred watt. People usually stay between about 315 and 370 C. Um, this would be 600 to 700 Fahrenheit. And the temperature is definitely dependent on your application. So if you have a little surface mount job, you probably want a, as sharp of a tip as you can get. But you want to keep your temperature closer to 315 C or 600 Fahrenheit, you need to be quick too because too much heat and you can burn them up. I have a sponge here to clean my tip. I usually keep some water here so I can just get things wet. You need to keep your tip clean so before you start soldering you need to put some fresh solder on and go ahead and clean it off. For soldering electronics, you definitely want rosin core solder. Um, acid core is not for electronics, it'll mess things up. Um, in the old days, we could get some good uh, lead solder. Um, so lead free, it has a slightly higher melting point, but um, for all intents and purposes, it's the same. So when you're going to solder, and by the way, it's solder in the United States and solder in on the other side of the pond so please don't write stupid YouTube comments telling me I'm pronouncing it wrong because you can pronounce it both ways so for starters I'm gonna get a little solder on my tip and then I'm gonna get the pieces of metal hot and then apply solder to the hot metal and I use a quick upward motion to kind of make the the bubbles look good but you definitely want to get the metal hot and you want to apply your solder directly to the metal. The reason you do this is because there is flux. This is rosin core solder and the flux will burn off. So if I just put it on my iron and let the flux burn off and then I try to stick it to it, it doesn't really stick to the metal that great. But if I put some fresh solder on there it'll go ahead and melt in good. So if you're gonna solder a couple wires together um, the most common method is to twist the wires together and then if you have something like a helping hand that is very helpful uh, otherwise it's quite a pain trying to hold a couple pieces of wire together. So the first thing you need to do is get the wire hot. So you're going to get some solder on here so that it uh, starts conducting the heat to the wire. Once the wire is really hot, smoking hot, you can go ahead and apply the solder. Notice how I'm applying the solder to the wire and the wire is just wicking the solder in. And you want to do this pretty quick otherwise your insulation will start to melt. So now that you have your wire, what do you do? Well, if you're, if you're poor, you will use some electrical tape to cover up the wire. Or you can use some heat shrink tubing. So another point to mention is that you need the rosin to make the solder stick to the wire. However, solder will stick to solder no problem. So if you tin your wires really nicely and you get the solder sticking to the wire, you can actually reheat solder. And even though this isn't twisted together, so uh, people are going to get me in the comments because this isn't the way you're really supposed to do it. Um, it actually is pretty sturdy. It's a good solder connection 
but mechanically um, there's not a very good connection. If you first twist the wires around each other there's more metal to metal contact and then when you apply the solder um, it gives you a little better connection. One of the most important things is to take care of your soldering iron tip and you do that by tinning the tip you can shake the excess solder off or you can use a, your sponge once you get it cleaned and then tinned you're ready to go so of course bigger components this is a big resistor and a big capacitor these things will dissipate a lot of heat so you probably want a fatter tip if you can or crank up your heat to uh, closer to the 700 Fahrenheit or 371C range. Now if you put a soldering iron on an old joint like this it really doesn't do a very good job of melting the, this solder. The first thing you want to do regardless if you're trying to fix the joint or trying to take it off is put a little fresh solder on there and the, uh, the components are work, work way way nicer then. So now you can see I can easily work with it now that I've put the fresh solder on there. 